I'm interested in learning more about machine learning and my first foray into that was through a guide I found online called Machine Learning for Artists and there's a whole bunch of different tutorials on machine learning here but one that I found that I was interested in is called Picks to Picks. Picks to Picks you may have seen through this image to image demo that was circulating around on the internet uh, where you draw a picture of a cat and it tries to interpret your image as a cat. In this guide uh, you can see kind of how they're taking an input photo and a target photo and then they're able to colorize these images in the style of the source photo. And there's a lot of other things you can do with that. Satellite photos, from Google Map tiles. Uh, so I just wanted to see if I could do something similar. And this is more a tutorial on the process of getting images into the format you need them to be for picks to picks than a, a tutorial on machine learning itself. Because one of the things this tutorial doesn't cover is, is how to get your own set of images. And if you want a really well-trained model, you need a lot of images. So this is what I decided to do. I found this quick draw database from Google where they ask people to draw a picture of various things like planes or ambulances or angels, etc. Um, they have over 50 million drawings, so there's a huge data set and it's uh, publicly available on GCP. Find links to it. I go to the quick draw data set, full, simplified and I was searching for fish and so you can see this fish.ndjson file shows up and it's 50 megabytes. Now the important thing to know is this is JSON data it's not images so what you get is a huge JSON file with all your data. So this is what the that JSON file looks like and you can see here in this drawing key um, it's just a gigantic array of coordinates and that is the coordinates every time someone put their pen down Drew a line and then picked it up. So you could actually recreate the drawing of each person's fish uh, But we don't need that. We just need the images. So the next thing that I found was this command line interface from Mike Bostock that allows you to convert NDJSON to regular JSON and the reason we want to do that is so that we can try to reconstruct these images in a format that we can save out. Someone else made a really great tool which allows you to view these this quick draw data as an SVG. And if I were to copy this code and swap out this JSON file for whatever JSON file I had created with the ND JSON command line interface. I can view my own set of drawings and then in order to download those drawings I could just copy this SVG save it in a file as say you know faces.svg and then I could open up that file in a program like Illustrator and see all of my faces these are the fish that I downloaded and uh, you can see they're all kind of roughly aligned. The trick here, one, they come in pretty small, so I wanted to get them to a size that was about 256 by 256, which is the size that pix to pix needs. I wanted to make sure that my grid was of a size that allowed all of these images to be self-contained. What we don't want is any one particular drawing, you know, sort of crossing over a grid line because then um, what we're later going to do is slice these images up programmatically um, so that we don't have to you know copy and paste and save out each image separately so we're going to be using image magic for that this is going to tell me okay I need to make slices of images that are 350 by 350 pixels once you have that run image magic and so I've saved this out as fish.gif and, and if you have image magic installed you can run this command and I'll, I'll post all this code but to convert this one image crop in a 30 by 19 grid so there's 
30 columns in this image and 19 rows. Um, yours may differ, but that's what I set up. Uh, so 30 by 19, repage, adjoin, and save them out into a directory. And you can call this whatever, but I called it the tiled directory. And then this is your enumerator. So one, two, three, four, five, six, etc. So once that's done, you'll have a directory here called tiled and it will contain all your images. After you've got all your tiled images, what you want to do is resize them to 256 by 256. So this is the code in image magic to do that. Um, we're just running a for loop and we're saying for all the images in tiled directory that end in dot gif, convert them, resize to 256 by 256, um, and keep their original name and extension. And we're putting those in the sized directory. So here's my sized directory, and you can see I've got all these fish images. All right, so now that we have our fish, we need to find photos of fish that, that we want to copy the style of and train our model on. I found this in Internet Archive book image library, and it has all kinds of really cool illustrations. It'd be great to be able to just bulk download all of these. And so I found a Chrome extension. There's a lot of them out there, but this was actually the only one I could get to uh, recognize images from Flickr by Vlad Sabev. So I downloaded that extension, and if I were to use it on this page, you can see it recognizes all of these um, photos and then you just select the ones that you want and click download. So you can see here this is what I downloaded as far as fish and they're all different sized images. They're all uh, 640 pixels wide those. But what we need to do is get those to be square and eventually down to 256 by 256 pixels. Here I've got some instructions for how to size those images appropriately. Again, we're going to be using image magic. First thing that we want to do is sample the background color. And the way we're going to do that is just sample the very first pixel and resize the canvas and fill the new space with that color. So that's done with this command. We're saying this is our image in color space RGB format pixel. And then we say convert background equals that color. This gravity center means we're going to be resizing from the center. So if we had, say, a 256 pixel image, <clears throat> it would expand outward from the center and fill that new area with our background color. So because these were 640 pixel images, we use this extent 640 by 640. And we're just giving a file name of fish dash T is the, the iterator. So one, two, three, four, five, six dot extension and in this case um, that extension is jpeg so once we've got these to be square we want to size them down to 256 by 256 so that's that process now the next thing we need to do is we need to get pix to pix to train itself on these photos and we do that by combining our drawing with our photo um, and we're going to use a I'm going to just do 100 of these images. And so my command to do that is for i in 1 to 100, do montage. And then we're going to take images from the size directory. So fish-i.gif. And then from the size directory of just our regular fish. So we're combining these drawings with these photos. We're tiling them two columns by one row. And the geometry is 512 by 256. Or essentially two times 256 pixels and then we're going to save it into the montage directory and call it fish dash i that's what i end up with what pix to pix is going to try and do is it's going to train itself to say that this drawing represents this fish this drawing represents this fish etc and we're going to define a number of epochs or iterations to run the model through for each image so once we've downloaded pix to pix we just go into the directory containing this pix to pixpy file. Mode train. Input directory is our montage directory. Output directory is our model directory. 
which direction A to B means that we're training A images to become B. Um, if our direction was B to A, we would be training these photos to become these drawings. And these are those epochs or epochs, I'm not sure how to say it. We're going to train each image through the model a hundred times. It's not really enough to get good results um, in our image set of a hundred images. It's not nearly big enough to get great results. But this does take a while. Even, even at a hundred epochs with a hundred images, it took me about uh, 30 minutes to train my MacBook Pro and it's it's really processor intensive. So once we have that we end up with this model directory and it's just got all the code that we need in order to create our training set. And here's all the data about 680 megabytes. Now we need to use pix to pix to run a new set of images through that model and so in order to do that we need to create a training set and the training set will essentially be new drawings paired with a blank image on the right. So we need to do montage again to combine some of these drawings with just an empty white square. And so the way that we do that is we run another loop. In my case, I'm just saying for I in 101 to 200. So we say convert them, fish 101, 102, etc. dot gif. Our gravity is going to be coming from the west. So we want our image anchored on the left side and the white space to be on the right. Background white, type true color. That makes sure that um, when we convert these to JPEG, they're not in a grayscale color mode because see the photos have an RGB value, but these GIFs are just black and white. So this true color converts them to an RGB color space essentially. Extent is again 512 by 256 and we'll put them in the training directory. So once we do that, Here's our training set. And now we can pass that through our models. We'd go back to our directory containing this pix to pixpy Mode is test, input directory, train, output directory, I'm gonna say is gen, and the checkpoint is our model directory. So that's just gonna pass everything through the model. And once we do that, we get this gen folder and it creates an HTML file and all of our images. Um, and if we open that HTML file in our browser, you get something like this. Um, I actually kind of switched some things around so that you could see each phase side by side. These samples are not the ones the model was trained on because it, it runs through those epochs, so it trains itself on all sorts of combinations of these images and these photos. This is just kind of a way to see things side by side. And you can see our output, we get um, some pretty crazy looking fish. Again, it's not gonna be perfect photorealistic uh, rendering, but that's kind of what I'm interested in. I'm interested in the weird things that come about through machine learning, trying to interpret our photos and images in our world. Anyway, I'll post this tutorial uh, online and include a link with the video so that you can copy all the code and do this yourself and download your own image sets and convert them to the right formats. Thanks for watching.